Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. I was breaking a guitar. Not to break things. Well, it was my iPad, but it was like a guitar. Uh, it, they smashed it at a, at a concert that you just rocked, like we, <laughs> like we do every episode. Oh, hello, audience. <laughs> I didn't see you there. What's up, people? Thanks for tuning in, listening, watching, whatever you're <laughs> doing, how you do. As always, you can find us on the podcast app, YouTube, SoundCloud, and reach us socially via Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, and Twitch to check out some sweet games, sweet content from our buddies, Parks and Alex. That was the best intro I think you've given yet. It's gonna get, great. It's going to get smoother every time. Yeah, that was good. I promise. The training wheels are coming off. I'm getting on my <laughs> trike, my tricycle. We're coming up. What Do you... What? Yeah, I guess you don't <laughs> use training wheels with a tricycle. No, you don't. Because the thing is, they don't tip over. <laughs> That's why they exist. It'd be a quadcycle if they had boop, the extra wheels. So, sorry. <laughs> They're coming off of my big boy bicycle. All right. Well, this went really well in the beginning. Anyway, what you guys, doing? welcome to the yeah. new Filler Fun Day episode on Friday. Yeah. As we day. mentioned, this is we our made first it week. Yeah, we finally. <laughs> Um, this is our first week of the new schedule, so Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and today is the new Filler Fun Day, uh, which I'm excited about. Feels good. I really like this new schedule. So far, it's been really helpful for yeah. us, honestly. Yes. Um, so hopefully, Amen. yeah, hopefully that sticks around. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm not quitting anytime soon. So. I, I didn't plan on it, uh, well, but good to know. We'll now that, see after this episode. We need like on a how lot of responses to be like, guys, we need you to stick around. If we don't get that, I quit. So. Oh, well, all right, solo podcast coming up. <laughs> Stay tuned. Um, That's not going to be awkward. Not at all. Hey, hey, there's all. You have to do the hey thing at the beginning. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for all the podcast listeners who had no warning for that, <laughs> that awful screech. We're coming up on episode 50, and I'm really stoked. Hey, man. This is, I think, 43. Yeah, 43. All right, very soon then. Next few Get weeks here. There. Eventually. Get in there. Yeah, Eventually. Yeah. Slow grind. Slow grind. Um, so, again, Filler Fun Day, we've got some drafting tips that we're going to get to in a yeah. little bit. Uh, but before that, we moved our Kiki Weekly to today, and we got a cool one for you today. Um, well, lay it on me. You've actually not told me what you've picked I haven't this told time, you about so this one. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited. All right, this is a two-card combo. My favorite. First card is Spike Feeder. Do you know what Spike Feeder is? I don't. I actually knew before this, but I just like this card. I have no idea. All right, so Spike Feeder is a 0-0 zero, zero creature Okay. for one and two green. One and two green. Okay, so plus one, plus one counters. And Comes stuff. into play with two plus one, plus one counters. Okay. okay. Now, you can pay two mana to move one of the plus one, plus one counters to another creature you control, or another target creature, I should say. To feed spikes. Yes, to feed spikes. Here, take the spike. Here's a spike. Poke some people with Got it. Got it. Okay. All right. In addition... You can remove a 1-1 counter to gain two life. Okay. So very lucrative card. It does a lot yeah, of things. Okay? I see. I see. Now, the second card in this combo, there's actually a lot of cards, I think, that combo with this, but there's one in particular. So either I'm those are pay with. two mana, by the no, way? No, no, no. Only the first one to move a counter to another And the creature. payment for the second is just removing a just counter. Just removing a counter. Okay. Okay. The second is Sun Bond, which is an enchant creature for two and a white. Okay. you know what this does? No. Okay. Whenever you gain life, you add a plus one, plus one counter to enchanted creature. So, you equip the spike feeder. That's pretty good. Yeah. Remove a plus one, plus one counter, mm -hmm. gain two life, and two counters on spike feeder because of the sun bond, hmm. which means you have infinite life. Good. Not only that, you have infinite plus one, plus one counters on spike feeder. Also pretty good. Which, if you do have mana of any kind, you can move those over to other creatures, things like that. And it's pay two, move one. It's move right? one. Correct. Okay. So you do have to have a lot of mana to, to yeah. move these around, but it kind of doesn't matter because it's all on spike feeder. <laughs> yeah, I would, uh, Sunbond is a white. Is a white. Right? Yes. Uh, I was going to say, that could go in an Omnath deck, but <laughs> not in Commander. Sadly. No, not in Commander, but... but Still, it's a pretty cool combo. I am like, fairly quick. I like that. You could ramp into this pretty quickly. I mean, again, in green, you're gonna get the ramp. 
Um, yeah. So you can get this out pretty quickly. I would say by turn three, you could actually yeah. have both pieces out, no problem. How how many decks does infinite life lose to? Because there's numerous ways to get infinite life, quote unquote. Yeah, but there's also ways to get infinite damage. Um, True. And so True. it's classic that people always talk about, you know, infinite life doesn't win you the game and all that's Like that gets said a lot. That being said, right. If you're against an opponent that has infinite life, you have to admit that's very intimidating. <laughs> well, like, yeah, how are you going to win at that point? You know, right? What I mean? If you're a Death Shadow deck, how do you beat infinite life? Yeah, I just don't wins think on you do. Right? Like, you just can't because they're gonna. I mean, you could mill them, I guess, do something like that. But in a Death Shadow deck, you're going to mill yourself way before that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, hmm. So, you know, there there are ways to beat them alternate alternate ways other sure, than yeah, just yeah, yeah. you know infinite life or something or dealing damage but you're definitely like giving yourself protection against the life like they're not gonna swing in and attack you. yeah you're giving yourself really protection from creatures if you think yeah about that, that's right? sort of how it feels so they have to alternate when yeah. kill i guess protection I mean? from combat damage because creatures can do other funky stuff mm -hmm. they still deal damage it yeah, just yeah yeah it's, it's just kind of the damage doesn't matter yeah it's like in star wars the worst one when all those Gungans are sitting in that field and the droids are just pew, 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 shooting at them and they're just like kind of hitting their force field and they're like, calm down, Jaja, wait. You just went to a level of nerd that not even this magic podcast has reached. You I'm, talked about Star Wars in a magic podcast. Yeah, I'm always pushing the envelope. I like it, but I'll talk about any nerd-esque thing you'd like to. Speaking of which, after this episode, we're probably going to play Magic and, and watch, anime. watch it. Yeah, it's going to be great. We planned for that. Yeah, actually. Like a few days ago, that was the plan. Um, yeah. So, now, let's, but, well, let's wait. Hang on. Good anime. Sorry. <laughs> like uh, Miyazaki and yeah, like, yeah. Howl's Moving moving Castle stuff. Not like... Princess Mononoke. Yeah, not a weird not, anime. Not Soul Eater. No. No. <laughs> I, I might have just made somebody mad. Sorry. So um, later's fine. I'm talking like no harems. Those are weird. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. Sorry. No, this is going to be Miyazaki for sure. We just haven't picked which one. Right, yeah. Um, and if you've not seen a Miyazaki film, do yourself a favor. Check You haven't out. lived yet. Yeah, you will be impressed. They are um, gifts to humanity, each and every one. A good way to put that. Thank um, you. But All again, right. this Kiki Weekly, it is very cool. Infinite life and technically an infinitely large creature. Um, uh, and so yeah. that's worth noting. It's not just the life, so it sort of gets you out of that too. Um, but yeah, very cool combo. Just thought I would feature it because I like Spike Feeder. Yeah, that's neat. It's a cool card. I had not. I learned something today. Look at that. For that, I thank you. I do what I can. I'm impressed. Episode's I'm impressed. over. We don't need to do anything else. All right, sweet. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, I used that joke last time. Yeah, you did. Oh, <laughs> I was wondering if you would again. <sighs> I, yeah, All right. I would. Every time you do it. <laughs> All right. It's such a cheap gag. <laughs> What is the main topic today, Will? Today, we're talking some draft tips. Woo. It is draft season. A new set is almost upon us. It is almost the hour. It will be. It is nine. When this goes up, technically, right? It'll be Friday. I guess. At the it's time, not Friday right now. No, not at the time of recording this. Uh, you're right. It'll actually have dropped Friday. Maybe. So the hour is here. You may be drafting as you're listening to this. Wow, that would be distracting. That would um, be very distracting. But sweet, you might learn Don't some things. That. Uh, that being said, yes, it's draft season. Um, not just for football stuff, but for magic. Lame. Yeah. Uh, so we thought that we should bring uh, some some tips, tried and true, maybe some new ones, just yeah. to the forefront. Get your brains turning so you remember some uh, uh, cardinal rules, if you will, of drafting. Cardinal also being a football team. Kevin. Stop. All right. Sports ball is lame. I did my fantasy football homework today, so it's 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 weighing on my mind. You did a lot today. I did. It seems like you did I, a lot for it resolves. You also did a lot for fantasy football. I, yeah, I you like did a lot. I put, it's a good day. I put my brain to the to the books. I'm really proud of you. That's great. I wrote a bunch of stuff down. Good. I got a callus from my my pencil. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, it's I like it. Oh. It's it's a sign of hard work. Did you name it? My callus? No. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> So many no. questions. <laughs> no, uh, I did name my. We do weird things. Oh, that's true. That's fair. Anywho, more on that later. That's on the uh, vlog channel that we have. <laughs> we don't have. We don't have a vlog channel yet. All right. So Kevin, <laughs> yes, bring us some stuff about draft, man. What's right. on your mind? Talk to me. So and talk to the people. 
So here's the deal, guys. I I did a little bit of research, mostly uh, reading some articles, things by LSV, things by Reed Duke. Uh, I took a lot of inspiration from Reed Duke's article, which is a little bit more general. Yeah. It's just tips for general drafting. Um, so it's not necessarily focused on Hour of Devastation, which obviously is the no newest set that most set. people okay. will be drafting. Um, but there are things that I think can definitely apply to any set. And so that's what I wanted to talk about. Cool. And the first one on my list um, is know the archetypes before you go in. Um, Great. Do a little bit of up upfront research. Just check them out, right? Um, sure. They've been really, really good lately about giving some flagship archetype cards, usually yes. with the multicolored, yes, two-colored yes. cards right now, uh, like black green mm. or blue mm. red or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, they've got sort of a marquee card for that archetype right. that sort of gives you an idea of what the mechanic's about, right? Like yep. green, black, minus one, minus one counters. You know what I mean? Uh, that's just normal. And sure. so you can sort of take a glance at those and get the general idea, but I would also maybe even go a bit further than that and look at specific cards in each color that sort of fit to that archetype, okay. right? Because there are definitely cards that fit in one, you know, green cards that fit in the green, black archetype, but then aren't as good in something like green, blue. They don't really fit that archetype quite as well. And so you want to be looking out for those cards I um, and read those signals, which I'll get to in a minute because that's sort of another point. Um, okay. but, but knowing those archetypes, I think that's just a general thing that no matter what mm -hmm. set you're going into, you should always know just what's there before you go to actually draft it. That way you know yeah. what to look for. Great. And I'll give an example from ours. Uh, <clears throat> Unraveling Mummy is archetype for uh, the zombies, black, white zombies. Uh, kind of just gives you like Kevin said, a great idea about what black, white zombies can expect. If you're in yeah. those colors and that creature type, really. Just a two, three for three. You can pay some, give a zombie lifelink or indestructible. Or death Which touch. is very powerful, by the way. Sorry, it's for, death touch. For Excuse black me, white. not indestructible. Awesome. It's death touch, my bad. Um, but yeah, it, it's yeah. kind of like a, a lord for zombies. Pumps, yeah. your, pumps your dudes, gives them things. Awesome. But, yeah, I love it. There you go. All right. Uh, the River Hopo is another one. You know, uh, gain life, draw cards in blue, green. Yep. Which is exactly what you want. I mean, yeah. it's perfect. It's just, it's good to know that information, um, not when you get to the draft table, but before that. <laughs> true, true. Um, you know, you don't want to be opening a pack and then saying, oh, what does this card do? I don't get, I don't get why this is in here or something mm -hmm. like that. Like if you know up front, it makes the draft process easier, Definitely. hopefully more enjoyable for not just you, but everybody. And also, it helps to build your yourself a, be a better deck. Right? Yeah, like, definitely. It, a refined strategy is a better strategy. Exactly. I'd say. Um, and to that point, uh, another point that I wrote down is synergy. Uh, mm, drafting good. for that synergy, um, again, sort of tying into the archetypes. And you brought up a good example, Black White Zombies. You want to be drafting, if you are in those colors, the cards that are for that color, right? Sure. Um, a perfect example that I came up with from Amonkhet, uh, Binding Mummy is just a great zombie card. It's a white zombie. Mm -hmm. uh, anytime you play a zombie, you get to tap a target creature, things yeah, like that. Awesome. Um, it's a great synergy with other zombies in your deck. So if you do pick a, bi a, a binding mummy, you ideally like to be drawing other zombies as well. And so sure. draft to that, right? Like pick up on those synergies, play to those synergies. Uh, draft yeah. is one of the best places where these synergies really come alive. Uh, you know, there, there are synergies in constructed decks, things like elves, things like that. Uh, zombies too zombies but. yeah um but they really really shine in a draft format or a sealed environment because that's where you kind of have to rely on them a bit heavier yeah i was gonna mention you pre you kind of have to right? yeah exactly I, you can you can absolutely draft a deck of just beaters of just kind of junk stuff if you want sure but again refined strategy yeah is better and i mean damage to face is is a great strategy yeah, yeah no that's right great, but, but it's nice to have interaction <laughs> between your cards there so it's, it adds value to yeah. every card. You don't always need to pick up a bomb if it's there. If there's something that... And that kind of will play into the foil Tarmogoyf debate, I guess. <laughs> if there's a card better for your deck, right. that's not... Versus just a good card. Yeah. Which I guess... Depending where you are in yeah. the draft. Um, and what that's is, another point that I've got. And what's actually. foil and what's not. That yeah. kind of depends as well. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> that's another point that we'll get to. Uh, that's last on my list, okay. actually. So. Cool. Uh, so, yes. <laughs> Whatever I said, I agree with what I said. <laughs> well said, Will. I had another thing and lost it. So. Um, okay, I mentioned already, uh, sort of on that first point, reading the signals. When you do sit down to draft, uh, read the signals. And what I mean by that is, you know, you, you open your pack one and you pick, ideally, just the most powerful card, a card that leaves you open, which is another good point. Sure. You should try and remain open, especially in the early, early draft picks. Mm -hmm. But, you know, draft what's good. 
Um, but if you know you pick a card and then some the next pack comes around and there's no cards in the color that you just picked, okay, it might not be open, right? Yeah. Like it's if it's the first pick, okay, you can sort of pass that by. But if you're just continuously, say you pick a again, I go back to Amonkhet. Say you pick a Glory Bringer, pick one. True. Um, second pack comes, there's not really any good red cards. Maybe there's a vanilla creature or something, and you're like, ah, that's not great. Okay, that's fine. It's just one pack. If you continue just to get cut on red, red's not open for you. Yeah. <laughs> you need to move into another color. Um, and there, what what's happening there is the person to whichever side of you that draft is on, normally it starts on the right, they're signaling you, okay, I'm taking red. Right. Which it's means a you want to be, yeah, that means you want to be in another color because otherwise you're just going to continuously get cut on red. And if you right. keep trying to draft for the red white archetype, for instance, and red isn't open, you're not going to get there. Yeah. You want to draft something that is open, ideally the entire time if you can. Sometimes you just yeah. get hosed, though. And that's that's tough to get around. But staying open and reading those signals is one of the most important things at draft. Yeah, it, I mean, that's true. In any strategy, um, one tip that's always helped me is not to be rigid in your strategies if you can help it. Uh, if you can stay <laughs> open to different ideas, kind of fluid. Yeah like water like uh, bruce lee says um if you are at all in a position to be flexible value that yeah. um you might get okay red cards but really good blue cards you know by pack two maybe can i be blue red instead yeah. of blue black like i wanted or red black yeah yeah maybe i can maybe you should do that mm -hmm. i mean you're exactly right yeah read that i i think that's important and you you mentioned another good point um that I just forgot, so never mind. <laughs> well, I, I, just, I, I had an idea point. and then I forgot Man, it. We are we are We're on a roll today. Doing great. Today. <laughs> but no, I, I think that's a great point. Um, you oh, need to read the people around you. Go I ahead. was gonna say you you mentioned staying open, um, and we've argued about this before that mm. you shouldn't pick. I say you shouldn't necessarily pick a multicolor card first pick. I think it's fine. Yes. I think depending on the format, it's fine. More I'm often sorry, than not, you fair. shouldn't. I don't think pick a multicolored card unless it's just the clear pick like sure. if the power level is way above everything else absolutely i'm not saying never pick it but if you've got better options or just other options that are maybe on the same power level uh -huh. i would say probably go with the the, the, the mono colored thing. card um just to yeah. remain open um that's just a tip you can take that or leave that uh, I think that's sort of personal preference. Yeah, a little you're bit, always but. you're kind of you're always a slave to what you open, right? Oh, and yeah. if if your gold card is the clear choice, if that's the strongest in the pack, mm -hmm. which it would have to be, probably not a good pack. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> you should probably just take it. My, I mean, my thought goes to Hezret's favor is in red. It's a rare, uh, and Wayward Servant's uncommon, I yes, believe, and it is gold. And you would pick Wayward Servant over, over Hezret's favor, hundred um, percent. In a situation pick like that, rebuke over Hezret's favor. Um, I think most people would pick almost anything. <laughs> yeah, it's just not good. No, it's uh, not. Um, but um, again, the the rest of the pack though has to be bad. Like I, I would think, like I would pick um, the deals four over Wayward Servant probably at electric a first trickery? pick. Uh, deals four. Not electricery. No, no, no. Oh, deals gosh. four damage. It's, that's my favorite card. Is electrify maybe? I don't electrify. Know. That's that it. could be it. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of things that I would pick over Wayward Servant maybe first pick, but. Mm -hmm. But if you're getting past cards with you know that go along with Wayward Servant, maybe you start picking them, hoping to wheel it. Although you probably shouldn't expect to wheel a Wayward Servant. I don't yeah, that's think. the thing. And um, do you have points about wheeling? Because we can, I can segue right into that. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so with wheeling stuff, when you're looking at your opening pack, for instance, what you'd ideally like to do is first of all establish what your pick is going to be. Mm. Um, but don't don't just pick the card that's best and then pass the pack, right? Like look at the rest of the pack, mm -hmm. see what's in there, see what you think is going to be taken. Um, you'll obviously know what are the more powerful cards in the pack, so you yeah. can assume that those won't be coming around. Uh, but count it out. See what you think will actually wheel. Mm -hmm. And if it's going to help you, that's great. And then if it does come back, you're you're in a golden position because you got the card you wanted back. Yeah. If it didn't come back, you know somebody else at the table is going for that. And so maybe you should draft accordingly, things like that. But sure. what, what did you want to... Well, that can kind of help solidify strategy, right? Yeah. Is when you When you make your pick, you're looking at the rest of your pack, you can say, all right, things that are likely to wheel are these. Do they help me with any strategy that this first pick does? Right. Say it's a, a glory bringer, for instance. Mm. Do I have any other cards, any white cards that buff exert stuff? Do I have any red cards that buff exert stuff? Yeah. Are those likely to wheel? Mm -hmm. um, stuff. 
that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just something to keep in mind. Um, you don't have to go like, you don't have to literally like count the cards and remember every single well, thing. No, but like, not. you can you can if you're if you draft a glory bringer, you can probably ignore like the green stuff that's just yeah. a fatty. <laughs> right, you you have a bomb. You don't need to plan on having another one. <laughs> you um, will pick up bombs. Yeah, I mean, you'll find more. But um, if yeah, yeah, they'll just come to you. I like to think of drafting as kind of like a funnel, where okay. you've got all of these options open to you at the first pack. Mm -hmm. Everything's open, uh, and the more and more you pick, the more you know. You see the strategies start to dwindle. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you've got your strategy in mind. Yeah, really, by like the second pack, you should have an idea. Oh I'd, yeah, I'd um, say the second pack maybe like third fourth pick in that pack i'm actually a little more i think conservative on that i actually think by the end of the first pack you should probably have a decent idea of what you're going to be doing and the reason i say that in in this format in a standard environment hmm. uh is the packs so for instance if you're drafting modern masters okay, okay just as an example all the cards in that set are on average more powerful than most other sets right so like okay. if you get past some things that are like not quite as good, it kind of is okay because they're still good filler, right? They're not great, but they're still good filler. In a standard set, there's kind of just a lot of really bad cards. And so you can end up, if you really don't know where you're going, you know, going into pack two, you can end up with just a really bad deck. Um, yeah. And you don't want to be putting, you know, if you have two or three filler cards, that happens nothing to be too too worried right. about everyone's but, had a vanilla creature here or there exactly but if you end the draft and you've got this pile of red blue and green and maybe a few black cards and you're like okay what do i do with this that's right. not a good place to be in right. right because that means you don't have the flagship cards in any mm -hmm. specific color to say that's the color i need to be in um and you really should know that ahead of time <laughs> like right right when you're drafting that's... i'm saying just a few picks past you should have what you want to go for, mm -hmm. but then also, you know how I am about my plan B. Oh, so, yeah, you need a plan B. So if if I'm drafting, uh, let's say, maybe I've got a Mardu mix of colors. Now, mm -hmm. I didn't plan to go to Mardu, but I picked up a, a Gust Walker and whatever yeah. else. Uh, but I see I'm getting past a lot of black and not a ton of white now. Mm -hmm. If I can go Rakdos, go you for know, it. I'm Cut a, a color. I'm going to switch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I think that's fine. Um, especially in a format. I mean, you have evolving wilds, dual lands. You have the cycling. In lands. Amonkhet, you've got a better chance of fixing your mana than you do hours. Yeah, for sure. It's still not great though. Like no. it's a two color format. You don't really want to be in three. It's, if you can splash yeah. it, that's fine. I Again, mean, it's it's safest to be in two. Three colors really only work if like one is kind of low to the ground oh like, yeah or like your bomb is in the, the yeah splash that's color. fine that's like fine. that's actually not too bad right um, right especially if you do get you know mm -hmm. for mom on cat if you get an evolving wilds mm -hmm. or something you'll be able to fetch out whatever you need yeah. but um ideally you'd really like to try and stick to mm -hmm. to at most two um and then maybe splash something but yeah but and i mean i could... wouldn't be solidly in three no I, I i don't feel good in three drafting no. uh in in these <laughs> form or sets i should say yeah um it's not impossible but it's no of course it's not. tricky yeah it's right? definitely tricky um it's hazardous well <laughs> yeah that my world <laughs> what you doing in my world <laughs> I, I don't know if anyway. that's from something it just kind of popped in uh, my head. anyway no. um another thing that i was going to point out to think about while you're drafting uh is your actual mana curve um, oh, sure. Mana curve is one of the most important things in draft. Sure. Uh, it sort of goes up there with synergy in my mind that you just have to have a solid curve. Mm -hmm. um, again, if you're ramp, you can have a bit of a higher curve. Uh, but if you're a low to the ground deck, you want to stick to probably not more than four on your mana cost and really, okay. really solidly have those two and three drops in a low cost deck. Um, and a sort of normal, just sort of average draft deck the three range is probably where you should have the most slots filled. Yeah. Uh, four, you can have a decent amount. Two, you can have a decent amount. But you only really want maybe three at max on the one drop scale. Mm -hmm. um, and then your bombs, obviously, on the top end, you want right. a solid, you know, three, maybe four of those. But I think four gets into a bit hairy territory, personally. But I think it depends on the deck. Um, but you really want that solid, you know, curve where in the middle here, you've got all the threes, maybe a little four. Stuff like right. that. Um, because the games are going to go later, uh, generally, I would say. Um, and so you just want to be playing stuff as much as you can. Yeah. That's all it really amounts yeah. to. 
and not only that but you want quality stuff to play right yeah. uh, most of the time this isn't of course 100 percent. Yeah. most of the time especially drafting a three <laughs> drop is going to be more powerful than a two of something else most likely you know and that's kind of excluding spells and in instants like winds of rebuke can sometimes win you the game over sure like a i don't know um ornery cootie or whatever yeah right so situational things can happen but especially for permanence mm -hmm. right uh the higher the cost maybe the higher quality of the card ideally yeah hopefully and, and that's you want to be able to get to those cards and mm -hmm. have plays up until you do yeah um, definitely and so you know that's just how it goes and mm -hmm. to be honest as far as the one drop slot goes because i think some people tend to overdraft in the one slot a little bit i used to for sure because it's they they feel like getting that turn one play is important which it is i don't want to discredit that right however if you don't have a turn one play in a draft setting it's not, not the make bad. or break thing yeah. that you know in a constructed format mm -hmm. as you know something like that it could be so i think it's really important to stick with you know three or less on the one drop scale yeah that's about um, right i think i'm i'm saying three because i feel like that's a solid number you can go more than that if you need to but ideally you wouldn't have to yeah um, like you know the reason in constructed decks especially that you have so many one cost spells turn one plays is because constructed decks perform way faster yeah than limited decks if, if you look at this like a race and you're building race cars essentially like <laughs> every racer just built their car they don't know how it works perfectly <laughs> like that day <laughs> exactly so it's a little bit slower that's kind of why limited tends to drag on that's why well, you win on the board it's the and the easiest decks place just to aren't do as powerful overall as a constructive format right. and so you're gonna go into the later game more often yeah. that being said don't all don't draft control because of that um right that's the thing that's the thing uh, it's, that's, it's what, it, like you said it's generally one on the on the board mm -hmm. right like you want a solid board presence yeah most like of the time nine times out of ten um i have seen someone win from uh uh approach the second son i saw someone approach that's to really win. cool and that can happen i mean totally that's, we're not saying that control or tempo plays don't happen and right. don't win you games but more often than not you really need the solid creature package more than anything else um yep. that being said removal uh interactive spells things like that those are all very important too oh yeah uh, do not overlook <laughs> yeah. especially removal spells i think a lot of people undervalue some removal sure um i undervalue certain spells <laughs> And you shouldn't, like, if there's a removal spell, you shouldn't just immediately take it, but, sure. you know, play it up against everything else in the pack. If it's clearly the best card, and if you yeah. really need removal, take it. But once you have, like, five or six, you know, removal spells, maybe you can devalue that a little, go into more of the creature side of things, yeah. things like that. Would you say um, five or six is kind of your I think your happy range? five is sort of my optimal number, um, huh. and ideally different kinds of removal. Uh, yeah, you definitely. Know, you, you want... want counters you want exile effects you want burn you know just straight up destroy target creature all of these are good to have a variety of yeah and that's um, not to say you need one of each of those in your no deck, right? i mean you get past yeah. what you get past yeah just like gonna blue black doesn't have burn but no. if you've got counters and kill a thing counters are great yeah kill a thing's nice too mm-hmm so i not maybe not as good as counters but you you, well, see yeah, yeah. you, see <laughs> you understand um all right my last point Bring it on. And this is the one I feel a little strongly about. All right. All right. I'm all right. ready for it. Guys, please don't just absolutely hate draft cards you don't like to play against. Okay. And here's what I mean. Yeah. If you open a pack, there are two cards in the pack. One you really don't want to play against. One fits really well in your deck. Just pick the one that fits well in your deck. You're not going to play the other one. I. You might run up against it and that happens, but like... You shouldn't take. You shouldn't hate draft over a card that fits your deck more. Yes, and I know true. the example that we have already alluded to. Right, and that's kind of a silly one and kind of a different. It's very different than yes. in a standard environment. Yeah. In standard, I don't really think there's a reason to hate draft too no. often. Not um, no, not really. Um, because there's, if you think about it, there's really no one card that's outright just busted for limited. Yeah, there's obviously your tier one stuff, things you first pick. But there's also invo or yeah invocations mm -hmm. um, that you know if they're not in your color, I don't. That's a good question. You know, do you do I take an invocation? Well, I mean, I don't again, so. it kind of depends on what else is in my pack. Yeah, I think if there's a better card, if for I'm your in deck red in white, pack. I have no white, and that spell that pings things for one. Yeah, and a diabolic edict. 
best believe I'm gonna take. <laughs> Although that would never like that would never happen. But well, I mean, and, nah, someone's in black. Someone takes it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but saying that, I mean, I probably take the indication. I like pretty things. I mean, I don't know. I personally, I think. If you're going from a drafter's perspective and just looking for good games, well, sure, you, should draft, you should draft what's good for your deck. 100% of the time. Um, excluding things like invocations because that you get into value at that point. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, you pull an invocation, it can pay for your draft most of the time. And yeah. so you have to look at it from also just yeah. that perspective. Um, that being said, I'm not an advocate either way in that instance. But say hey, you open a pack, saying. I'm saying straight up just hate okay. drafting. Um, don't do it. It's not beneficial. If there's nothing for you in the pack, sure, that's when you can right, start that's doing the that. Only, like, that's the only reason where fine. you should hate draft because yeah. at that point, if there's a card that nerfs your deck and then nothing else for your deck in the pack, yeah, take the card that nerfs your deck because that's just a smart play. But if there's a card that fits into your deck and then a card that nerfs your deck, you should take the card that fits into your deck more um, as long as it's a worthwhile you know, include. Yeah, I mean, I think it, that's a kind of a, a split of philosophy. That's like fine. I kind of I would I would value maybe how good the card that fits into my deck is versus how bad the thing is that I'm looking at. Say yeah. it's say I'm for whatever reason uh I'm doing like a Boros aggro sort of thing mm-hmm. and there's an essence scatter there. <clears throat> and then that one drop red guy that taps gives gives the thing haste. Are you I mean you're more likely to play the one drop guy i would take the one drop i might not i mean i, I might take the essence scatter so it well it also counter. depends on how many playables you already have and uh, well like i mean yeah so that's true. That's again it always point, depends there are like, variables like if i've already got my one spot filled yeah i don't need that one drop guy even though he's in my yeah. colors i can play him i really would rather not play essence and that's fine i mean you know? it's just it's one of those things that like so many people that i've run into are like yeah i'm gonna hate draft everything that goes against my deck and it's like but then you're not gonna get a good deck again yeah (laughs) you're taking picks away that could be played so the optimal time to hate draft is when you cannot play towards the end of a pack usually exactly when there's just nothing in the pack for you then yeah do it pick the most powerful card and that kind of goes back to the (laughs) funnel analogy right if you've if you've got a solid plan yeah and there's nothing else for you start taking away things (laughs) that hurt you yeah and that i mean but at that point it's okay i'm saying in the early stages of a pack oh you know yeah, what I mean? yeah if like, you you're if you're literally just hate drafting that i don't like no yeah if you just open pack three and you take a card that you just don't want to play against yeah nah, that's kind of lame mm-hmm. i guess yeah because the idea is i mean okay this is optimal and i'm being an idealist and i know that that's fine but a lot but, of people are when we talk about magic it's magic yeah, candy land it's fine. exactly but in an ideal world you know, people will draft for their deck, create the best deck that they can ba- they can make with the cards they've been passed, mm-hmm. and then they play a nice fair game of Magic, right? Like, that's what you want. Yeah. And if you don't want that, I'm not saying you're wrong, but that's what you should want. Like, I'm just, you know, you should want a nice, fun game of Magic. I don't yes. think... I think a lot of people are in it sort of just to win. If you're drafting it like an FNM... Like, come on, just have fun with it. Like, you yes, know? but I will say, there is an edge that I get a rush from trying to get into the mind games, the analytics of a game of Magic. Okay, and that's why you, in a control deck, mm-hmm. you could be holding up a hand of lands. You could have three islands, but you're still flipping them. <laughs> they cast their, their Thrag Tusk. You think about it. You start to tap a mana, untap it. All right, count out. Do the yeah. Do that whole. Oh thing. yeah, I've you done know what that. I'm talking about. Unta- oh yeah, the the. Okay, if he does, that. and then you just sit there and sort of mumble to yourself. And you look back at, and you're like, maybe okay. you say a card name. <laughs> that might be a little obvious. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. But whatever it is. No, okay, yeah, that's fine. Like, you're kind of playing your opponents at the same time you're playing your deck. Yeah. Right. You're playing their deck. It goes back to that music thing. That good old jazz analogy. <laughs> right? If every portion, every every instance of magic from the deck building to the actual playing of the game is composing a song, mm-hmm. you got to be playing magic as soon as you open that pack. 
is my argument. And if that means I take away your essence scatter, I don't know that I value essence scatter as highly. No, no like, 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 that's just what I'm thinking. Like, like that's just one. I, that's just an example I thought of. It could be yeah. Glorybringer. Let's say I'm in blue green, yeah. and Glorybringer somehow survives. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you probably play Glorybringer at that, but you splash for Glorybringer at that. Point. Actually, maybe yeah, he's a bomb like, enough. You play again? It. That's a bad example, but you understand what I'm saying. I mean, I'm right? Just saying. Yeah, I personally, I'm not for hate drafting. Not in the early stages of a pack. I am not hate drafting simply because I, I think a card is unfair or yeah. too good against me. If there's not another pick in the pack, I know, that's different. I know, I you know. should you should pick the card that but hurts I have, your deck most. Look, I but have I'm hate saying, drafted and I will again. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but it's not going to be pick one, pack three. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. That's that's more what I I'm talking about. Is right. you know, right. there's that, optimal that seems... times. You got to recognize that. Just be a smart magic player. Don't be a don't be a, a crappy don't be person. <laughs> don't be a meanie. Don't be just mean. be good at magic. <laughs> Which is weird for me to say that. Because I'm not good at magic. He's not, that's true. I'm not very good. <laughs> I enjoy it. No, you're good. good at magic. I'm average. Well, I'm gonna take a moment to thank you. Because this brought up something that we we had a, a heart to heart talk before this episode started. And here's the deal, guys. Because we've started this podcast and we've tried different kinds of magic and things like that, Will, you made yeah. me a better magic player. Kevin I appreciate that. Just want you to know. <laughs> Kevin's trying to make you feel sorry for him. All right, moving on. <laughs> you got any more points about drafting? About tests? drafting? Um, that was enough of that. <laughs> let's see. Drafting, do it. Yeah, just try it. It's yeah. fun. It that makes you better at magic too. Kind of to your point. Oh yeah, yeah. And you likewise have made me a better player. Oh. Um, you taught me a lot lame. about cards and junk. Uh, but no, <laughs> drafting definitely makes you a better magic player. Yeah, you got to think does. on the fly. You got to understand mechanics and synergies, and that can be tricky yeah. if all you do is net deck, <laughs> which is a topic on a, a, a filler fun day a while ago. Uh, yeah 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 um yeah yeah drafting is a whole different game uh it's not constructed in mm -hmm. any way um nope. you know there's ideal decks that you should go for when you're drafting mm -hmm. so for instance there's a really good archetype yeah you know white black zombies there's a lot of premier cards in that deck that you should shoot for sure but short of just being past those cards you have no clue what's going to happen so yeah. you have to just sort of do the best you can mm -hmm. um and then play as best you can which is always fun so yeah. uh whole different ball game you ready for another music analogy go ahead so you might be able to play the guitar yeah but if you can't improvise on the guitar mm -hmm. you're gonna get booed off stage yeah that's true don't that's get true. booed off stage no don't be good at drafting all right all right um, so so moving on <laughs> What else you got for me, bud? We got a question of the week. We sure do. Um, this as one was you guys, good. yeah, this one was pretty cool. Um, as you guys may remember, we kind of messed up the last one. We did. Um, we flubbed, and sincerest apologies. Yeah, uh, my bad, and mine. Um, Our we're gonna. Bad. No, it's really just Will's. But we're gonna try really hard to stay on point with these. <laughs> uh, in the in the future and and moving forward, yes, especially we will. with this new schedule. Again, we just got caught up with the schedule change. I think that's sorry all. about it. Sorry. Um, but moving on, they will be talked about in the Friday episode. For sure. Uh, usually posted on Monday, talked about on Friday. And this week's question of the week was, what is the best sweeper in Magic? That's a great question, because there have been many. There have been many. And that's, <laughs> that's kind true. of a, that's kind of like a, you can think about sweepers in a different way then. Right? Well, exactly. There's different kinds of yeah. sweepers. Like um, Cyclonic Rift, is that a sweeper? It is technically a sweeper. I would consider it one. I think that's sure. an argument. But I, I would, I think most people would consider it one um this is stretching what about blood moon no i don't think blood moon's a sweeper right. no there's an argument to be made though is it anyway yeah. um but the, yeah there's different Sweet kinds i mean lands. sort of not really so well mine, <laughs> they don't get to play him which is armageddon kind of, is a sweeper yes but <laughs> they don't get to play him either way it's kind of the same thing no it's not um but there are tons of different sweepers. Again, the traditional sweeper being something like Wrath of God, yeah. where it's Damnation. just destroy all creatures. Um, but there's different kinds of, mm -hmm. of sweepers. Sure. And bouncing them counts, uh, doing many other things, as we'll see. Um, sure. So, again, as we always do, we'll go in reverse order. Third, second, and first Bring place. Bring it at me. I want to guess. Um, 
All right, so in third place, I want to guess. Give me, give me the color, and I want to guess the card. Well, there's four cards in third place. Never mind. So <laughs> they each got two votes, um, and there are four of them. Do you want to take any guesses? Huh? Two votes. There are four of them. I'm gonna guess one. Damnation. Incorrect. Supreme verdict. Incorrect. Cyclonic rip. Incorrect. <laughs> Three strikes. I'm out. All right. Sorry, coach. First, we have World Fire. Second, okay. we have Blasphemous Act. I like that one. Third, we have Living End, which I really like. It is technically a sweeper. When it hits the field, everything gets cleared from the field. That is true. And that is true. Uh, speaking of standard stuff, Hour of Revelation. All right. All of them came in third with two votes. Uh, okay. I'm pretty stoked. Again, Hour of Revelation is, I think, hitting Commander really hard. Um, probably would that's yeah. what most of the comments we're talking about is how great it is in any white commander deck yeah. well and um, that's that's where sweepers really are <laughs> oh the yeah most i mean that's where you get the most value out yeah. of them and that's where our revelation really gets turned on because mm -hmm. you need so many permanents on the field but for three mm -hmm. ideally three white you get to wipe everything right um, which except sweet. lands which is just great so mm -hmm. um i i buy that argument uh, living end is really cool too. I really yeah, like living end. I wouldn't have thought of that one. Well, exactly. It is a sweeper. And it is I think of it a as sweeper. a deck and not as Yeah, I think most people do, but I thought that was a really good point. Good job, guys. In second, we have a tie. Okay. Supreme um, verdict's here. No, it's not. Dang. It's number one. Maybe. <laughs> okay. All right. In second place, we have first, <clears throat> excuse me, merciless eviction. Oh, that's another return to Ravnica card, I believe, right? Actually, don't know. I think it's a black white. I think you're think. right. Black white. Uh, right. Gate crash, I believe. Yeah. And you get to pick from modes or something like that. It's yeah. really good. I um, it's used a lot in Commander. I, I like Merciless Eviction, yeah. but I can't remember if that's um, it specifically. Toxic Deluge. Hey! Was the other one. Yeah. Which I I'm like... a little surprised Toxic Deluge didn't win, actually, to be honest. Really? But yeah, I, I value Toxic Deluge pretty highly because it scales really easily. Yeah. And it's a three drop, not a four drop, as traditional sweepers tend to be. But you can counter Toxic Deluge. You can. You can. There's one sweeper you can't counter. So, in first place, we have a three-way tie. All right. All right. Yeah. What do you think they are? You've already named all three of them. Have I really? Yeah. Cyclonic Rift. Yep. Supreme Verdict. Yep. Damnation? Yep. Wow. These are the first three you talked about. So, wow. Um, these damnation, are all great. Damnation, really? Yeah, I'm a little surprised that Damnation I'm gonna got I'm going to say no, not Damnation. That's... I like Damnation a lot. I, yes. It's a good sweeper in black. However, I would have thought Toxic Deluge yeah, would have been above I'm going to say I like Toxic Deluge more than Damnation. Um, it's cheaper. It comes in one less. Yeah. I mean. And it scales. Um, yeah. Supreme Verdict, I get. Uncounterable. Sweeper. It's in two yeah. colors. Nobody cares about that. Nope, it's, it's uncounterable. Um, it's awesome. Cyclonic Rift, I also buy the argument for oh, yeah. because you, <laughs> it's just amazing, right? Overload oh, it. Bounce everything. <laughs> Yeah, no, um, that's you just reset the game. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that seems exactly. pretty good. It goes uh, in every blue commander deck. Yeah, exactly. Uh all very, very good. Mm -hmm. Um other interesting uh cards that were thrown in here. Uh Catastrophe was thrown in, Ingarrick's Wake, uh Decree that's a cool of one. Pain, Phyrexian Rebirth, uh Wrath of God did get one vote. Nice. Um Yehini's expertise, I thought was an interesting one. Yeah, it is. Um, huh. Yeah, I, I felt that was a little interesting. Ugin was in here technically yeah. is a sweeper he's got a sweep effect uh, as well as gideon that champion I, of justice I which i thought was interesting um terminus was also in champion of justice really this is minus 15 right exile I think so. all other permanents so it's it's a long way to go for a sweeper yeah, but crazy. it is a cool sweeper it's, um, yeah, it's, you can't really come back from that no no you can't so some very interesting uh picks for this one but a lot of them in the top three so uh we had a lot of variants i mean the mm -hmm. max votes were four in first place things got four votes sure second three votes and then third two, two votes. votes so okay. um we had a lot a lot of variety which was really interesting i like that yeah it's pretty cool i do too i kind of throw my head in with supreme verdict i think it's the best yeah i think supreme verdict's up there for me the too. only thing they can do is somehow bounce their guys before it goes off yeah that's really exactly it. and not many people have unlimited oblivion rings or anything like that nope this so. doesn't happen very often so 
Very cool. Is Supreme Thank Ring you all guys. creatures or all? I believe it's just creatures. Yeah. Well, then Oblivion Ring would do it. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but again, thank you guys for participating in the question of the week. We've gotten more and more responses on those as time has gone on. Yeah, it's very and fun. We really appreciate it. It's really fun to interact with you guys and just see what you think. Um, yeah, so I'm happy definitely. to do those and see what we get. Um, yeah. The next one will be posted on Monday. Uh, so you can expect it then yeah. on all of our social media outlets. Everywhere. Um, now, speaking of social media outlets, Talk I have to, to point out as we always do on these episodes as of right now, um, we do have a giveaway going on. Oh, do we? Uh, we have a lot of stuff in that giveaway, including this cup, a sticker uh, of It Resolves, or a vinyl sticker, um, and then four packs at least, because we've talked about including some Hour of there Devastation could, there in there. There could be some bonus packs. There might be some up. bonus packs just thrown in for the for the fun of it, because you guys Maybe. have been so great with your support. Yes. Uh, but there are currently two Amonkhet packs, one Kaladesh and one Aether Revolt. Uh, yeah. Again, we're talking about throwing some hours in. Uh, it just wasn't out yet, so we couldn't really do that quite right. yet. Um, right. Maybe we, I could we could have planned it better, but that's we fine. We could have, but we'll, that's okay. Um, yeah. So uh, we do encourage you to participate in that. All you have to be doing already is follow us on Instagram. You can also just go follow us now. Um, True. You can. All you have True. to do then is repost the original post and tag us in it. Yep. And that's it. Simple as um, that. We'll handle it from there. You will be automatically entered. We've already got something like 70 entries. Uh, uh-huh. So there are a lot. But uh, I awesome. would encourage everybody to get their name in as quickly as you can. We will be picking winner a winner uh, on July 20th. It's coming up. So And it's we'll send corner, it out immediately man. and get your information on Instagram. Yeah. So And we'll spin the wheel and... Someone's See getting some cards. Get. Um, and I'm really excited cut. about it. Uh, we do yeah. have other giveaways planned almost immediately after. Yeah, uh, so, stay so stay tuned for those. Tuned for those. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll be focusing, I think, on Facebook a little yeah. bit. Uh, so we encourage you, if you want to go ahead and it's happening on the follow Facebook. us over there, Yeah. Uh, we encourage you to do so. But yeah, I think that's about it. Great. Um, that's all I had. We do have our cracker pack. Oh, my. Probably the last online kit cracker pack. I will not miss not touching my gold card forever. <laughs> um, as yeah. always, guys, these Kraken Packs are sponsored by our good friends over at Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. Oh, they have done so much to help us, yeah, uh, and we really appreciate you. it. They, they've really come through with so much. So yeah, Check them out, guys. Rock Hill, South Carolina, just <laughs> just across the border, yeah, would yeah. you say? If you're in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, it's literally 10 minutes south. So come hang. Oh. Um, I'm there a lot because I really like Clamp. He's a nice guy. He is. He's a great guy. He's very cool. <laughs> um, but we yeah. don't have gold cards for this pack. We just thought we'd open them. Yeah. So what'd you get? Um, I got a kind of a neat pack. Okay. So, uh, Ooh. yeah, for sake that we're these, a foil. It's not like a pickable card, really, but um, it's just kind of neat. It's good sideboard. Yep. Definitely. Champion of Ronas. Ronas? Ronas uh is my rare so for three and a green it's a three three if i exert it i can put a creature card from my hand onto the battlefield so good yeah i really like that especially unlimited i could play my bomb turn five <clears throat> yep i Instead saw the draft six. uh with gabby uh gabby, gabby and lsv yeah gabby sparth she's cool um and lsv and they played against a deck that had the champion um and it's they played tricky. like a colossipede or something with it which was just kind of insane. yeah i think i think that has to be the pack oh uh, i think so pick, right yeah you do have other good cards in there too. i do trial of strength cartouche of ambition uh desert ceridon's not really first pickable but it's a classic bomb <laughs> in this set yeah um hmm. i do not like scarab feast not at all <laughs> sorry I, I just read it i actually hadn't i might have forgotten that card and sequestered it uh, Vizier of Tumbling Sands is also pretty neat. It's a good engine. Um, yeah. But no, Champion is definitely the pick. Absolutely. It's a solid card. Um, so, my rare, uh, you mentioned it earlier, Approach of the Second Sun. Um, that's the pick! Um, no, that's the pick! <laughs> definitely not picking it. Um, cards that I would consider um, at the low end, I like Unwavering Initiate, but I don't think it's first pickable. Um, I also like Splendid Agony, but again, I don't know that I'd first pick it, not in this pack, when I have a Shafet Monitor, which I think is awesome. Yeah. Uh, True Heart Duelist, which I also think is great. Yes, uh, True Heart's awesome. And then Weaver of Currents, which is just solid ramp. Um, I may value the Weaver a bit highly, so I'm probably not going to pick that first, though. I think Shafet Monitor. Yeah, I think you're not wrong either with True Heart or Shafet Monitor. True yeah. Heart really lends to a slower game Yeah. in an already slow format. I can mm-hmm. get you know it can, it can do some work yeah um, it's great i mean two for a two two that can block an additional creature and embalm it Solid. for three yeah i mean that's just great 
Mm -hmm. uh, so I really like all of those, but I do think Shafet Monitor is the pick for me. That's probably, so, yeah. I probably would lean that way too. Yeah, I, think. I mean, being able to fetch out a land and stuff <laughs> and nice. then also have a bomb all in one card is kind of awesome. Yeah, it's a good um, package. Yeah. Cool. Well said. Um, all right, guys. Well, we thank you for hanging out with us yeah. on our first Filler Friday episode. Our, yeah, Filler Friday. Yeah, look at that. Not bad. Kind of has a ring to it with all that alliteration. Huh. That two-word alliteration. Oh. Um, <laughs> no, but we That's do appreciate you your support and hanging out with us. We hope that you enjoyed it, and this is helpful to you when you go to draft Hours of Devastation. Yes, Hour hopefully. of Devastation. Only one. Is that right? Hour? Not Hour hours? Of devastation. I've been calling it Hours, I think. Uh, this for sure you call it hours but it's hour of this ah touche touchy um, touchy but two butts we we really appreciate you guys this has gone so downhill um we hope again that this helps you keep in mind these tips and tricks when you draft yes. and uh yeah i think that'll be it we're definitely definitely see you guys on monday for uh, another deck tech for another deck tech um all right, yeah. Is it modern deck techs this time? Oh, it is. I'm excited. I'm excited. We got a few suggestions already. So Very cool. I'm really um, excited about I that. I have one in mind that I wanted to do. Hopefully, it was suggested and we can do it as a thank Community you. Community Yeah, but we'll see. We'll see. Stay tuned for that, guys. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, my name's Will. My name's Kevin. This has been It Resolves.